Georgia, and another good friend, who is the star and also now the producer of The Little House on the Prairie. And it's going to, why am I doing it that way? Oh, no. That's and a rhinestone cowboy. It's been so successful, next year NBC is going to do The Little House Behind the, the Little House on the Prairie, which is a very small family of people live there. And of course, that is seen here on this network, which is uh, uh, NBC. Yeah, NBC. At 8 o'clock, <laughs> you welcome Michael Landon. and say, hey, I'm going to be up there. Oh, I didn't fantasize, John. I, I did it. Well, I know you did. You came out and became a big bonanza. But you know, nobody ever asked me to do a guest shot on bonanza. And, and everybody else it, was no. doing a guest shot, and nobody came to me and said, did I or did I not ask you to do a guest shot, John? Yeah, but you want me to play this school marm. <laughs> I thought that was a, it was a put down. I could have done you'd it, too. Have, <laughs> you'd have been wonderful. <laughs> You're doing impressions tonight. No, no, not at all. How is the little house on the prairie, by the way? Oh, it's a little teeny thing. Oh, come on. Man. Little like, oh, it's going great. I came over to see you very, once when you were shooting, uh, I think last year, my parents, and they really enjoyed it, and you showed them around. Fascinating. It is. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I guess for people who are, who are not in the business, it's very interesting to see a house where the roof raises up. I have that right here in my home. <laughs> the wind there. blows. That's right, and the house comes up and so forth. Well, what do you want to, what did you used to do? Because I remember when you did Bonanza. You guys all went out, uh, Lauren and uh, and yourself and Dan Blocker and went did fairs and rodeos. Now, oh, I loved them. You had to get some kind of an act together. Oh, did you we know? ever? Yeah, what'd you do in the act? Lauren was kidding about it one night. Well, Lauren used to, uh, Lauren did an act with, uh, he generally did an act with Dan. Sometimes he did a single. Uh, I went on a single. You sing songs, tell jokes. Tell jokes? Oh, tell jokes. At fair rodeos? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some, can you remember some of the... Uh, some of the bigs? Yeah, some of the... Some of the biggies? Blockbusters. Uh, well, we used to talk about how much uh, Hoss ate for dinner. Mm -hmm. How much did he uh, eat for We dinner? would say, oh, he, you know, when he's not eating food, he would lie in his bed and dream about eating food. At night, I'd hear noises from the room. <coughs> this was the stuff you used, what? honey? Absolutely. Then one morning, he, he had a terrible dream. He dreamt he ate a 25-pound marshmallow. Yes, and, and he woke up the next woke, morning his and... pillow was gone. Pillow was gone. Right. <laughs> These were, that was the biggie. <laughs> right. they, they generally played the theme music <laughs> right after that. <laughs> and you I got, into around the, the arena. got into the trailer, rode yes. your horse, and shot several people and left. But I did a lot of, uh, you know, I wouldn't just, you know, come out casually. I used to, I used to just ride out there, you know, yeah. at the rodeo. So generally, I, uh, an enraged chicken. I'd get on that and just spur it. What the heck? <laughs> what did you sing? Did you sing? Yeah. Why, I is it solo? I mean. I sang, uh, I didn't sing the Bonanza theme. I didn't sing that. There are uh, not any words there are, that. Oh, there are so words. I'm sorry, of course there are. <laughs> you ever hear the words of that? We got a right to pick a little fight. Bonanza. Any one of us who starts a little fuss knows he can count on me. One for four, four for... That was before Purnell left. Yeah. <laughs> one for four, four for one. That's our guarantee. It's like a car commercial. I'm a rhinestone cowboy. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that Bonanza had a theme. <laughs> Don't kill my big actor. Don't kill my big... This is, this is going to be it. Did you always want to be an entertainer? You came from where originally now? I came from... I was born in Forest Hills, Long Island. In a violent tennis tournament. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, told Mom, don't jump the net. And... <laughs> Delivered center, center court. Yes. Huh? Oh. Uh, but I lived most of my, uh, my young life in... Uh, well, obviously. What's so funny about that, lady? <laughs> I, li I lived in a little town called Collingswood, New Jersey. Uh -huh. Yes, back east. <laughs> All of you? There's no nobody's there. Did you want it to be someday be an entertainer? Seriously, I did. When I was ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be an entertainer. You can do it. <laughs> A 25 pound marshmallow joke <laughs> doesn't deserve to be in front of the public, so I'll overlook that. All right. That was a pretty good line. Oh, thank you. I wish, I wish I'd have done that, and I probably will. Will. This is the old saying. No, but when I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be up on the stage, and I was a boy magician. 
Obviously. Couldn't have been a girl magician. But, you know, when I was a, I mean, a little boy, I was a boy magician doing my magic act for the public. And... Well, when I, went, when I went to high school, though, you, did, you, you know, you couldn't... Today, if you're in a high school, they have plays and things like that, and, that's, and it's all right. But when I went to school, or when you went to school, let's face it, they, the other know? guys would kind of kid you a little bit if you, if you wanted to be in school plays and things like that. What, was it considered a sissy? Oh, time? yeah, it was when I was in school. We never, none of the guys would ever do any of that stuff. Oh. Why? I finally, I left, I, the only play I ever did when I was in high school, I did in a, in a town nearby called Haddonfield. Another big town. No applause for Haddonfield. Good. I know where I had to. That's a good town. But I, and I went to, and did a play there, Haddonfield Plays and Players, and I played a Japanese houseboy. A Japanese houseboy? Yes, that was the first part in a play called The Bat. Did you have lines? Speaking lines? Well, of course I had rhymes. You... <laughs> I was a worker extra there, you know. Uh, and I played a Japanese houseboy, and it's a, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. And right I didn't that... tell anybody in Collins what I was doing. Oh, right from there, it was rocket to stardom after that. <laughs> I read something that was in People magazine this week or a couple of weeks ago. The press gets on people, as you know, in this business sometime, and they called you, quote, yeah. yeah, you were quoted as saying, as being a power mad jackass. I said that? No, in a magazine. Oh, you I are thought quoted, I said that. I, quoted gee, as I, being. I'm a masochistic little that. fella. Somebody wrote that. Does that bug you when you read stuff like that? True is true, John. I'm you not are a these. power mad. No, you know, you know what these people write. I, I believe it. You see, when I read things like no, that, I believe, believe that. And I said, I didn't know that about Mike Landon, and, and it disturbed me a lot. No, you know what it is? It's because I, I do a number of things on the show that I'm on, so... The majority of people who write articles about show business, having the slightest idea what it takes to make a picture, having the slightest idea what it takes to make a television show. So when they list all the areas you're involved in that I'm supposed to be in, because that's my job, they suddenly feel that I'm butting in on somebody else. When the fact of the matter is, as an executive producer of a show, you are involved in sets, you are involved in, in music, you are involved in all these various areas, but they don't know that. Because they never take enough time to come down to the set and find out how you make a movie. It sounds power mad to me. <laughs> I can see where he would interpret that that way, you know. Because... Well, it's four checks. <laughs> That's right. You know what you're doing. You're no, be dead. You're no dummy. Right. Get in everything. Did you, did you ever... Uh, there was an incident once where you belted somebody in the press, wasn't there? Was, was, that, was that another... Oh, yeah, but that, that didn't have anything to do with uh, that anything that they had, they had written about. I was doing a... I did a tour in Sweden once. And, uh, Just while Bonanza was? Yeah, while yeah. Bonanza was on. So I went, uh, I checked with the guys. Some guys wrote my act. <laughs> and uh, they did said, don't the worry, don't How worry. How marshmallow joke play in Sweden? <laughs> let, me t let me tell you how it okay. played. They told me that everybody in Sweden, and this is many years ago, <clears throat> that it was a compulsory. You had to take English in school. The, so they said, tell all your jokes in English. No problem. I said, fine. So I walk out, and I played I play the folk parks. Thousands of people standing out there. And I come out, and uh, the music plays, and I get up there, and I tell the first joke, and it's an oil painting. I mean, there's 15,000 people. <laughs> Nothing. Mm. Didn't have the slightest oh. idea. Anyway, that night, we have a banquet. 50 people from the press. And I go downstairs. We're at, I think, the Grand Hotel or something. Did you ever get any laps at all during the jewelry? Just nothing much happened? Oh, I just went right into a fight scene. Whenever I get in trouble, I Oop. do a fight. Have a guy come out, hit me with a phony liquor bottle right. and we beat each other up and the people go crazy and you've got nothing nothing zero <laughs> that night we have a banquet 50 people from the press and i found out uh, after i sat down at the table i was buying i was buying dinner for 50 people i didn't even know so i gave an interview to a, a fellow from one newspaper in stockholm the morning newspaper guy sitting next to me from the afternoon newspaper i turned to him he wants the same story i gave to the guy in the morning newspaper by now, I'm very tired. We've been doing fight scenes. I had a broken wrist. One of the stages was smaller, and I went right off the stage. He tells me that if I don't give him the same story that I gave the other guy, he's going to write negative. The bum rap you. Yeah. And then he goes into a tirade about people from the United States. Uh, what's wrong with our country? I mean, he's going on and on and on, and I'm so tired. And I'm with a buddy of mine named Bobby Miles, who's a stuntman that did the fights with me, I look at Bobby, and I said, what should I do? He said, well, don't let him eat. So I said, that's a good idea. I said, you're not eating. So I took his plate. Because I'm buying. I'm not going to feed him while he says this, right? Why so now the guy, now he jumps up and really does a number on what's wrong with this country. And go. Now I look at Bobby. I said, I took his dinner. What do we do? He said, hit him. <laughs> so I get up and I hit him. 
The minute I hit him, oh, all the cameras right go right away to get all the press there. The police grab the guy and drag him out because they love me. It was the only chance they had to drive fast from town to town. <laughs> they used to be able to drive fast and they loved it. So the next day in the newspaper, there's a picture of me hitting the guy and it says, Mike Landon, Don Juan. Because I punched a guy. We did tremendous business hey, the whole super. week. Great the whole week, yeah. It I kept looking for the guy. I was going to use him in my act. I did that once. Also, yeah. yeah. She'd have never hit her. She was a little teeny old lady. <laughs> I bet I know her name. Yes, you do. <laughs> well, take a, uh, we're going to take a break here, but we're coming right back. Boom, puddle, 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 puddle,